Chuck, uh, how unusual is it for these issues to be discussed on the day when jury selection is supposed to begin? And then how many issues can you, as yeah. the defense or the prosecution, bring up? So I'm going to just steal from Temadayo. It's not unusual for these types of issues to be discussed. In my experience, it's very unusual to discuss them on the day that you're trying to pick a jury. Um, you, you, you literally can't do both things at once. Jose, and you have all of these folks who've been summoned to jury duty waiting uh, while these issues, and they're important issues, are resolved. How many of these types of issues do you have, ancillary issues regarding the admissibility of evidence or whether you can call a particular witness and ask her a particular question? Happens all the time, uh, but I don't like it happening when jurors are waiting. Yeah, and the, the judge absolutely could say, I'm going to postpone these because you're not going to be able to ask these questions of the witness, of the potential jurors, which is the only, only if you were going to do that, would you need, mm -hmm. need to decide that why you have people sitting there waiting, wondering what's going on and where they're going to be put in that box. Uh, the other thing I would just add, because I agree with Chuck, now that's coming out of a federal court experience too, where to the extent you have these questions coming up about evidence, normally the judge will say when the judge will take them up, whether or not they want you to brief them or not, but then they'll make a decision about when on the calendar it's going to happen so that they can prevent people from needlessly coming to the courthouse and say, okay, you don't have to come till noon today uh, instead of 9 a.m. or whatever the time. So that kind of accommodation for jurors is actually incredibly important, particularly when you're trying to convince people who are fair-minded and can be are qualified to serve that they should want to. That's something mm -hmm. judges think about a lot. Just quickly, Temadayo, based on what we've heard in the reporting coming out of the courthouse, what do you see as the wins for the prosecution and the wins for the defense? So I think the wins we're seeing are the admissibility of certain pieces of evidence. If you're the prosecution, you want, for example, the information about the Access Hollywood tape coming in. The wins for the defense are limiting the scope of that admission. So you do not want the video of that uh, of those famous comments coming in, but just the underlying uh, substance. So I think that's where you're seeing the balance of the judge trying to go down the middle. He wants the prosecution to be able to have their case, but not the evidence to be so prejudicial that the defense can't have a fair trial. Carol, I'm just thinking about those 1,500 or however many people there. Where are they? What are they doing? What do they have access to? And what don't yeah. they have access yeah, to? Yeah, they're, they're in a, a waiting room kind of being herded like cattle right now, Jose. And to Maya's point, um, you know, typically in, in jury selection, you see jurors try to make up all kinds of reasons that they cannot serve on this um, jury. And the judge will then talk to them to really get to the bottom of, oh, you have your, um, you know, your you're getting married and you have uh, a big vacation coming up and or are you really the primary caregiver for this young child? Isn't there anybody else that could do this? Really, your civic duty, which you are required to do for you. And I've seen judges go different ways on that. But he's not Judge Mershon is not doing himself any favors in terms of getting uh, the jury pool to uh, want to serve on this jury. I do think that this is a little bit different, um, you know, talking about jury selection as a whole, because it's such a high profile case. The big issue here will be those stealth jurors. We haven't talked about it um, yet. You know, those mean by stealth jurors? I mean, those that one or two, uh, those one or two jurors that want that are going to, and let's just say it, lie in the voir dire process to those questions because they want to fly under the radar and they want to get on that jury because they've already made up their mind one way or the other, whether it's a never Trumper, he's guilty, I don't even need to hear the evidence, or he's a MAGA supporter till the day he dies and he's always going to vote for an acquittal. Those are the people that this process is meant to ferret out. It's not so much jury selection as deselection. Is that an easy process to ferret no, out? No, it's not an easy process. And, and especially given the fact in this day and age that we're doing self-reporting by jurors, you can bet that Trump has a team of jury consultants out there, you know, using, looking up these people's social media accounts to try to see what types of people they are. It's, it's a very complicated process. I had said previously, I don't think it's going to last. I don't see the judge uh, pushing this out more than two weeks. 
I don't know. This is taking a long time. Yeah, we haven't even gotten <laughs> yeah, to the beginning exactly. of yeah. jury selection, which was supposed to start a couple of hours ago. Von Hilliard, Chuck Rosenberg, Tamadio Ganga Williams. Thank you, gentlemen. Caroline and Maya, please stay with us. So, hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it you tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.